Alongside the speed improvements, Python 3.11 added a lot of new features. I've already talked about the Tomolib uh, module, the brand new module that was introduced uh, in last Friday's video. And I'm gonna be talking about async error task groups in uh, this Friday's video. However, in this video, I'm specifically gonna be talking about exception groups and the accept star syntax. These features lie within Python 3.11's more broad exception handling improvements, which include better messages to better show kind of where exactly um, an error is being raised or you know what exactly is causing the error, and notes that you can add to exceptions as well to provide more helpful exception tracebacks. Exception groups and the exception star syntax specifically provide the ability to raise and handle multiple exceptions at the same time, which is really useful. You know, for example, if you have multiple async error tasks running at once and they all throw errors, or at least some of them throw errors at the same time, you want to be able to debug them all at once rather than you know handle one and then you know you run it again and you run to the next and you run to the next and it, it just takes forever. I did say in my Python 3.11 overview video that I did on the the day of release that I wasn't particularly a fan of the exception group syntax. However, having used it a little bit, um, I'm actually not too fussed by it. It looks a lot worse when you have nested exception groups, but in its raw form when you don't have that, and to be honest, you're probably not gonna have nested exception groups that much anyway, it's not actually that bad to use. So to create them, I'm gonna create a variable just called exception group, and we're gonna use the exception group uh, base class. And then we're going to pass our message like we would for a normal exception. This is an exception group. But then we also need to pass a list, or it can be a tuple, um, of exceptions to be handled within this exception group. So I'm going to pass an error, a value error, sorry. Value must be greater than zero. And I'm also going to use a not a directory error as well. Uh, must be a directory. This is probably kind of a, a lesser known built-in error, but it does exist. So if we, uh, we don't need to do a try there. If we do raise exception group, my uh, my choice of variable name is causing some issues for the autocompleter. Once we run that code, we have this error traceback here. So it looks fairly similar to a normal traceback, but there are a few changes. You know, first this kind of whole you know, structure with the pluses and the hyphens and everything. Um, so you have your exception group trace back, uh, most recent call last, you then have some information about where it was raised and you have the main exception, um, the exception message and number of sub exceptions. And then both of these sub exceptions are listed under one and two. Uh, you have our value error and our not a directory error in here. And while these can be handled using a standard try accept and catching an exception group and iterating through exception group dot exceptions, this isn't the way it's designed to be used because the exception star is designed to be used for this. Um, so if we do try accept and then we can do accept star value error as eg, and then I'm going to print uh, handling. Uh, value error. I don't exactly know why I've done it as an F string. I kind of have a bit of a habit because most of the time when I print a string it is a formatted one. <laughs> so I skipped forward a little bit to after I finished typing everything out because I thought you didn't necessarily want to watch that. Uh, but this accept star syntax here is uh, actually filtering out uh, types of exceptions from the group. So if a value error is found within the exception group, which in this case it is, that value error is filtered out or it's actually removed completely from the exception group and it's returned as this exception group here that we can do things with if we want to. And then it will move on. So long as there's another error in the chain, it will actually move on to our not a directory error, see if it's there, which it is, and it will handle that as well. And it will remove that from the group. And because we're handling all of our exceptions, we get these print statements. And because there are no exceptions left within the exception group, by the time we reach the end of the try accept block, we don't actually receive an error. If I was to add a third error, say a type error, and say must be an int, and we run it again, not a dot, that used to be a comma, there we go. Uh, we will actually get our error here, but we only get the one that we haven't handled. So the value error and the not a directory error have been removed completely and we're just left with the type error that needs to be handled. We can also add multiple errors of the same type. So if I add another not a directory error and say still must be uh, a directory, if we run that, 
we won't get errors because this uh, takes all instances of an exception out of the exception group. So in our EG, we have, if I just do print eg.exceptions, we'll see we have a tuple of our two not a directory errors. So these need to be handled um, separately to each other. And you can use a for loop to iterate over the exception classes and handle them all individually. Uh, but if you do have multiple of the same type, then you do need to actually do a little bit more work in order to deal with them. However, I can't imagine that would be a thing you need to worry about in the vast majority of use cases. Now, there are some things to keep in mind. Uh, as I said at the start of the video, exception groups can be um, uh, nested within each other. So an exception group is a subclass of exception, meaning it can be passed in. If you have that, you know, let me do... Um, let me just implement that real quick. So if we have this where we have our value error and then we have an exception group containing our not a directory errors and then we just raise uh, the exception group as normal, then we will get uh, this very funky looking error trace back. This is what a lot of the examples used they had a lot of nested stuff and this is what I don't really like because this is just really confusing now to me. So you have your exception group and then you have a second exception group and then within that you have your one and two. I feel like these should maybe like be like 2.1 and 2.2 just to make it a bit clearer, but I don't know, maybe that's a bit much to ask for. I don't know. I don't know how difficult that would be to implement really. Um, but that is one thing to keep in mind that exception groups can be nested. Another thing to keep in mind is that you cannot have um, accept and accept star statements in the same um, thing. So if we were to do uh, type error as exception and then just do that because it's going to give us an error, it will give us a syntax error saying cannot have both accept and accept star on the same try. So you do need to keep that in mind. I mean, it's not the end of the world because accept stars can be used to handle standard errors as well. So if we were just to raise a type error, uh, saying must be an int and then we use our accept star down here uh, and then we do handling type I can't be asked to use the shift key uh, then it will handle it as normal so accept star can be used in place of accept but accept cannot be used in place of accept star in that sense accept star is an extension on accept rather than a brand new thing in its entirety so that's everything I wanted to talk about when it comes to exception groups. If you like the video, then leave a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you have any ideas about what you want me to cover in a future video, leave them in the comments below. I read every single one, so the feedback would be greatly appreciated. If you want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so in one of two ways. The first, you can become a member by hitting the join button below. Second, you can become a patron by using the link in the description. One pound a month, you can be on this screen like these people. A really big thanks to Adam Drea for becoming a super patron. And I'll see you in the next video on Friday where we talk about async IO task groups.